What's up, guy? <laughs> well, I know you don't want to start a Monday like this, but tough weekend for Los Mets. You know, just just a tough. You know, I know you're you not know, a fan of the Phillies, and you know, I thought you were supposed to go no, in there I and, hate, I, and I hate make Philadelphia. Hay I, and get I hate back into I, the no, race. We're not, we're not supposed to. Know. I mean, that's a tough. That's a tough ball team down there, led by your ex Joe Girardi. Um, no love uh, for the fight in Phils, um, but it's getting late early. Uh, it's getting late early in this pennant race. We're all, you know, a third of the way through. Sure. Um, and you know, I, I think in terms of timing, you, you can't take anything for granted, right? No, I, listen, I, I, I'm, I was just, you know, I'm just upset about it. it was I know a tough you are. Weekend I know, and me. you're very it's, compassionate. Um, yeah. And uh, um, I appreciate your concern. And I know. Uh, Coupled by the fact that Aaron Judge is going on the DL for like the 96th time. In yeah, his no, career. it happens. But I, no, it's too bad. Yeah, but I in mean, Yankee I, Land, I, the funny thing is, in Yankee Land, you know, Clint <laughs> Frazier comes out of nowhere and, and goes <laughs> nine for 13. You know, yeah. Mike Talkman, who you never heard of, neither did I, by the way, all of a sudden he's the next gen of one of the best outfielders in the game. Yes, I said that. So anyway, but I mean, that's not what we're here to talk about, Tim. You know, what are we well, here to talk about? There's a lot of interesting stuff over the weekend. Throw some stuff my way. Well, I, I think, you know, you, you've got NVIDIA making a play for, for arm. You've got Buffett bailing from banks, uh, getting into gold. Uh, not all banks, but again, anytime Buffett makes a move, you know, I, I, think, that's, I think that's fascinating. Uh, Amazon rack space is being talked about. So there's some different stories in the market. I don't know. What, what do you care about? But is it too late? You know, it's that Carol King song. You know, it's too late. Big fan of Carol King, by the way. I will tell you that Tapestry give me, we, is not, a stop, top 15 stop. record of all time. No, it's not. Yeah, no, it is. Not. Give, give, yeah, give, it me, is. Give, me, give me four songs off of off So Tapestry. Far Away, It's Too Late, Baby. Come on. I mean, don't play the Carol King game I, with me. One of the great singer-songwriters of all time. But my, my question But I was saying it's you, never it, too late. You're saying it's never too late, and yet you're bringing up Carol King saying it's Well, no, too because late, it baby. just came to me. It's too late. It is. I don't think it's too late for Warren Buffett uh, to get into the gold market. And, again, we talked about this on Fast Money tonight. I said this on the call earlier today. I don't think it's necessarily an indictment of the banks that he liquidated some of his positions as much as it is a, an endorsement of what's going on in gold and the reasons why yeah. he's choosing to own gold. I think he sees or his – minions see this world of fiat currencies and i think he's come to the realization you know what maybe now is the time in history to get into the gold market and he's doing it vis-a-vis -a, -vis a position in barrett gold so as investors you know the, the term it's never too late to is is something that really is a risk management statement it's it's never too late to uh get out of a bad position not compound a a, a a poor uh, allocation by staying in a trade. It's never too late to, to, you know, to, to hedge. It's never too late to put on a small position or a large position um, in something you have high conviction of if you've done your work and you think there's significant more valuation upside. So I, I think that's where we're going with this. And, and I think in the case of banks, um, you know, if this, if we're, if you remember Mad Libs growing up as sure. a kid? Sure. You had to so, fill in the line, right? Mad right. Libs. You had to <laughs> right. put in your own line, right? Right. So, so if, if and I'm I was sure, by the way, before you go into this, I know yeah. for a fact that you were one of those guys who found any excuse to put in a curse word in these things, and you got a real kick out of yourself. Am you I know correct? What? Just tell me the truth. You're incorrect, buddy. So the Seymour brothers were were uh, had a little bit of scatological humor uh, as part of their repertoire. But 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 what I thought was fantastic about Mad Libs, and for folks that you don't know, um, it, it's 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 a tale. Uh, it's basically fill in uh, noun, adjective, adverb, exclamation uh, around some phrasing of a story that you could completely make your own. Um, I probably haven't. I haven't explained this well, but, but the Seymour brothers found the most fun, not in cursing, because that, you know, I think profanity is just like in, in life. Uh, I think it's kind of degrades. We, we like using words like stinky or smelly or, or, or you know, crotchety, um, grumpy, um, you know, so as one, adverbs. one level so. above the vernacular. Oh, that's fair enough. No, and I'm sure it was clever, and I know you guys got a kick out of it, but or why we, are you maybe, invoking the Mad Libs here? Maybe we, maybe we drop in the word fart somewhere. If, if given a noun, sorry, I, I, I just took it, obviously, to bathroom humor. So the reason I'm evoking Mad Libs is uh, in the case of banks, um, 
if I if the opening sentence of my Mad Lib was it's never too late to blank uh, banks, um, I, I would say it's never too late to buy banks uh, as well. And, and I think ultimately you, you've had a chance to go through an earnings season where you saw a lot of revisions uh, and, and essentially a lot of banks putting aside, I should say, um, loan loss provisions. Um, but I think you have a case where look, this crisis is not emanating from banks. Uh, if anything, I think banks will be the big beneficiaries when this thing gets back on Main Street. This is the ultimate value play for people that are looking for value. And that's why I, I think, you know, I, I choose to view Mr. Buffett's move not as necessarily an indictment of banks, um, but I think he was really looking for a reason to, to, to buy gold. Uh, and and uh, I think some of the things that you talked about would exactly be it. But um, look, I don't think it's ever too late to to think about how you do want to hedge impending inflation, how you do want to you know look at gold as an alternative to some of the uh, the problems we're probably going to see in interest rates uh, continuing to to struggle here, um, or you know possibly. Uh, you know, the, the dollar continuing to spiral lower. So uh, I like the gold trade. I like the barrack trade. And the reason I like this gold miner is this is a gold miner that has kind of gotten religion and come to the other side. And, and actually, at this point, has a fantastic balance sheet, almost trading, you know, uh, went from trading like three and a half times debt to, you know, one and a half times debt. And it could be debt free in another year. Yeah, I think it's fascinating that somebody, you know, who for years basically said how gold was just a shiny rock. Uh, is now making a foray into the things that, but good for him for adapting. And again, going back to that phrase, it's never too late. Let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. Is it, is it too late for the Mets to make it, to admit they made a huge mistake? And listen, I think Robbie Cano's hitting like 480 or something. Like all of a sudden he's found his stroke, albeit in losing baseball. If you could ship Robbie Cano out right now and take your medicine and eat a portion of that salary, would you do it? I would get him out of here so fast and make your head spin and give that Jimenez kid a place to play. Would you trade Robbie Cano, don't you know? Um, I, what's, what am I getting back in return? And what am I sacrificing in terms of eat, eat, you're, you're well, eating? I mean, it's they're going to take, you're, you're take the You're eating a portion of the salary. It's, you know, what do you think you're getting back? You're not getting anything back. It's a salary well, dump. I think, I think anyone that wants Robbie Cano right now is somebody that actually believes there's a little bit more magic left in, in that bet. What do you say, uh, Robbie Cano? What do you know, Robbie Cano? I, I, I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot. But I, I, I tell you what, in the, in, the, in the never too late and in the gold world, I know you were a big hip-hop fan uh, growing up. But, but, yeah, I uh, love the hip-hop. So ha how, about, how, about, how about the news today? that almost 20 years after uh, J Master, Jam Master J was, was, was murdered, they actually have caught, uh, caught the, the, the perps on this one and got, you know, one guy's in jail and they got another guy in custody. Um, but look, Run DMC, I know I was joking, I don't think you were listening to Run DMC or LL Cool J or, you know, uh, Jam Master Flash for that matter, which, you know, I kind of was back in the day. And, and I think that was a ton of crossover. I think those guys were instrumental uh, to bringing, let's call it that urban scene uh, to a, to, to, to radio near you, man, your boys sure. at Smitty. Um, we've argued this on, on commercial break before, so we don't need to get into this, but Run DMC may just have saved Aerosmith's career. Um, yeah, no, with, I think, with listen. Walk this way. So we've talked about that. Maybe that's the case. You know, listen, I, I love, uh, ladies love cool J. I love him as well on that NCIS <laughs> Los Angeles yeah. show yeah. that he's yeah. on. I think it's fantastic. That's how I have gotten to know him. Uh, but in terms of the music genre and there, I think there is a D in there somewhere, you know, it's really not my thing, but anyway, that's it. Well, look, it, it's, it's never too late to, to, to hope for a new horizon in Flushing. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to dance with the one that brung me. I think Cano stays on this team. Uh, and as, as uh, let's see, Tug McGraw said, you got to believe. And it's Look, never too late. So I know we got to go. Years ago, I told you you should trade Matt Harvey. You thought I was nuts. And then last year, I said, now's the time to trade the koala bear or whatever he's called. You said, I'm nuts. Now the guy's hitting a You're buck nuts. 85. And he struck out more of the entire league. And that is Pete Alonso. And I will talk to you tomorrow.